All right, guys, so I've had some people ask about crappie, what they look like on side scan, how I find them. So here are some great examples coming up here. So <clears throat> I went over to school back here, open water. They're just off to the left out here. Here's another school. Uh, these are relating more to a dock cable. So these are big cables uh, that you can see on down scan, side scan that are anchored in these condo docks here. And then within that, if you look, Right here, this is a massive school of crappie on the back inside of this. So if you're looking at these docks, that would be like uh, on the back corner there, close to the condos, just suspended underneath it. Now the thing with side scan and side imaging and stuff like that is you don't necessarily know how deep they are. Here's another little pot of crappie. But you don't necessarily know how deep these are unless you can see the shadow over here on the ground. So um, <clears throat> one thing you kind of need to take into consideration with that is if you can drive over them with down scan, you'll know actually how deep they are. Like some of these fish that we drove over back there, they're around 30 feet deep. So that is how you can find them. That's what they look like. I'm going to show you some more examples of, uh, of where I typically look. I'm going to go into some actual creeks like this creek here or if... Uh, Really, any of these longer creeks we'll go into, I'll just idle right up the gut, and that's where you're gonna find a lot of your crappie this time of the year in the winter. Now, uh, if you have side scan, if you have uh, that technology and forward facing sonar, you can very efficiently catch these fish that are roaming uh, in what I call no man's land, just open water. If you don't have forward facing sonar, it's still possible. Um, but they do move around a lot. So if you don't have that, I would focus on docks or brush piles. Find fish that are suspended around or over something physical, and that's gonna hold those fish in place versus just these fish that are in the middle of the creeks. They're mostly related to shad and they will move a lot. And some days, some days they don't. Some days they'll kinda sit there and, and you can catch them over and over and they don't move. And there's other days where you're actively on the trolling motor on high, chasing these fish around the schools basically because they move that much. So uh, that's just a food for thought. If you don't have forward facing sonar, that's what I would focus on to be the most efficient with your time on the water. So we're gonna go uh, graph another creek or two, find some spots, catch some fish, and just show you how I generally set up on it to help you catch uh, your crappie limit here on Lake Fields Works. All right, so we are just gonna idle into this uh, this pocket here. It's nothing special. It's actually been very vacant this year, this particular cove, compared to last year. Now, you can see, here's a couple balls of shad. You can see they're real tight to the bottom here. Here's shad, that's what they look like on down imaging, or side imaging, sorry. I drove right over them, so that's why you're seeing them on both sides of your side scan. Now, there's one important thing I wanna talk about with your side scan. And that is the frequency that you use. Uh, this is Lowrance, and I have a three-in-one transducer. I used to have a structure scan 3D box, which I think is actually far better than this, and I'm gonna end up putting that back on my boat. But for the time being, this is what I have. This is uh, what I'm using, and I can utilize this uh, setup to show you exactly what I've talked about before, because I can change the frequencies. So look over here as an example. This is some shad. This is actually like a, a circle of them, a couple balls. There's probably some fish in the middle of there kind of chasing them up, getting them scattered like that. So what I'll do is we are on 455 right here. Here's my frequency. Here is uh, the image, right? Okay, I'm gonna pause this. If I adjust this, see how much brighter that gets, how much better that return is, and if I dim this down, my sensitivity, everything gets darker, gets harder and harder to see, okay? 455 is a lower frequency than 800. So what that means is you have more power, you have more range. The higher the frequency, the less range that you have with sonar. So if I swap this over to 800, I'll go frequency to 800. This is gonna start scrolling here. Notice this is 455, same settings. This is now 800. See how much darker this is? It's a lot harder to see. So if I am graphing and I'm looking for bait fish, I'm looking for the smaller stuff uh, in, a, in a large area, because I'm looking 100 feet both ways. That's a huge area. So I'm always running 455 when I'm looking for that because it, it makes things a lot better. Now, I can turn this up and it, 
it will get brighter, but you still, it just doesn't have the power. It does not have the range that you get with 455. So if I took this number here, which is 100 feet, and I bumped that down to say 60, you get a little bit better. You'll get a little bit more power out of it. And it'll be clear, actually. 800 will give you the best picture if you get it dialed in correctly, but I'm not looking for the best picture. I'm, I can interpret what I'm seeing. I'm looking for fish. I'm looking for shad. I'm looking for structure. So I like to run this out to 100 when I'm doing this, and I'm usually running it about auto or negative one, but it just depends on the bottom. Uh, you know, like the hardness, if it's very rocky here in the Ozarks, we've got a lot of rock, so you're gonna get a lot of hard returns. If you're in a place that has a, uh, more mud bottom, then you're gonna get uh, uh, less of a, a hard return. You're gonna be able to turn that up a little bit so everything pops a little bit more. But I'm gonna aisle out of here and we're gonna go over some more shad and we're gonna see some crappie that are gonna be to our right now. So they're gonna show up on this side of the screen, either in this area, and we're gonna be able to uh, see their shadow, see how high they are in the water column, or they're gonna be in this area and we'll also be able to see their shadow and figure out kind of where they're at and then we'll set up on them, cast to them, try and catch them, and uh, we'll go from there. You can choose whatever uh, color palette you like, whatever suits your eyes, everybody's a little bit different. So I like this, uh, this tan color, I don't know if it's like default color, whatever you call it from Lawrence, but uh, it seems to make things pop well for me. And I also think it a little, a little bit depends on like your sunglasses. Uh, I like to wear the sunglasses with an amber base that makes just colors brighter and pop more versus if you've got like a, a gray base, it does dull things down just a little bit on your screen. It makes it just a little bit harder to see stuff. But this is also my favorite screen setup here. I got just a little bit of mapping so I can tell where I'm at. And then I like mostly side imaging because you want to see as much on this as possible so it doesn't compress things uh, down this way or this way. And down imaging, just a little sliver is all you need really. So as we're graphing along, you can see there's just a little uh, brush pile over here, nothing crazy. You can start to see the side here. See this bank, see these rails. That was that contraption over there that we see coming out and you're gonna end up with the seawall over here. And now you're starting to see just a few crappie and it might be hard to pick up on the camera so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna stop it and I'm going to increase the sensitivity so you can see a little bit better but we got some shad over here I'm gonna stop it real quick and there are crappie right here and they're also right there on down imaging so what I'm gonna do first is I'll go here and I will zoom in just a little bit and get my menu out and I'll turn my contrast up so you can see them a little better. So, okay, you could probably see them now. So I'm gonna get it really high. You could probably see it now in the water column. See all those little specks? Those are all crappie. Now here, totally washed out. You can't see anything. But if I dial this back down to where it needs to be, which is about negative one or so, negative two maybe, you could start to see maybe, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on this camera, but you can start to see some little specks there, right? Some little black spots. If we zoom in just a little bit more, you can barely see them on there. That is the shadows that these fish are casting. So you can tell by the difference uh, in between there that these fish are probably, you know, around 10 feet or so deep, just based on, on the shadow difference I'm seeing. And if you're running your down imaging, like I am here, you can confirm that if you look and this screen, and it's also on auto, so what I'll do is I'll bump that contrast up. I'll bump that up real high. And if you want, you can bump that up real high if you're looking for a suspended fish, because you don't really care what the bottom looks like that much on down imaging. You're mostly looking in the water column, so you're looking for those little specks like that. That right there is a nice little school of crappie that you can catch. So you can tell your depth, though, on this. You can see they're about 10, 10 to 15. Some go up about 5 feet, but... Let's just say they're around that 10 to maybe the eight foot range is what you want to call it. But that's what I'm looking for there. Now I'm gonna dial this back down because I normally I normally don't run it that hot, but I'm trying to show you just so you can see on this camera what you're looking for to help you out a little bit. But as far as like your mapping and stuff goes, let me zoom in here. This is it's just a creek. I don't even know if you want to really call it a creek. It's just a cove. It's just deep, 
Uh, there's not really a lot of structure in here. And basically what happens is the shad just move in here and the crappie come with them. That's really what you're looking for uh, is shad and just these deep guts. And there's gonna be some crappie nearby. So we're gonna set up here. Uh, we're going to face into the wind. You always wanna face into the wind when you're doing this, especially over open water so you don't constantly blow into the school and blow over them. Now, if you don't have forward facing sonar like I was talking about, this can be a little bit difficult but you can go back and drop a waypoint on those fish and figure out exactly where they're at and then kind of sneak up on them, make some casts to them and see if you can get them to bite. Now, like I said, they might move around a lot, so you might only catch one or two without that and then they're gonna move and you gotta have to refine them. So that's why I prefer to do things uh, with physical cover for that. But we will set up here and we will see if some of these fish are willing to bite. Ooh. There we go, we're hooked up. First one. Little baby school here, but you see you can catch them. Pretty healthy one too. And sometimes, this is little, I call them like a wolf pack. Sometimes little wolf packs have some of the bigger fish in them. But you gotta work a little bit harder to, to stay on them and keep them. That's a nice, uh, it's probably 11. Inch crappie, let's give them a quick measurement here. Uh, 11 and a half. So that's a nice, uh, nice winter crappie there. I'm just going to let them go today because I don't feel like cleaning them. A little school of them out here though, but they're not too many of them. But like I said, they're catchable. Sometimes they are the little bit bigger ones too. There we go, two in a row. Another healthy one. And there's one with them too. Water's so clear up here you can see real well. So there's two in a row <clears throat> on that. Back to back. This one's not quite as healthy as the first one, but he's good. Ten. Ten and a half maybe or so, something like that. So I'll let him go. Today's bait of choice. Uh, Nate got me using these and they're they're really nice. This is a little Kitech Easy Shiner is what it's called. So on a little uh, 16th ounce head, slow reeled in. This is a three inch model. And this is a, I think Ghost Rainbow, Ghost Rainbow Trout or something like that's the color. Just something natural is all you need uh, in this clear water here. You could go somewhere, uh, it's got a little more color to the water than get a little funky with your colors. Get something that's got some contrast. But this is an example of a a small school. I'll find you some big ones that we'll get onto and uh, I'll show you what, what we really, really like to look for when we crappie fish, especially if we got a couple people with us in the boat so everybody can can whack on them pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna idle up here. This is gonna be on a channel swing, a channel bank where a creek channel uh, comes up right along the bank. I'm not gonna show you exactly where I'm at because this is a pretty big school. I don't want to get beat on too dang bad, but uh, that's the gist of this setup here. So there are many, many setups, uh, you know, things that are going to be just like this all across the lake. So the first thing you notice as we come across here is we're starting to see some shad balls. A little bit there, a little bit there, there's some over here. You can see we're actually on the edge of the creek channel coming up and this is the harder bottom. So as we come up here we should start to see a lot of crappie suspended. You can see there's just shad everywhere, which is what I really, really like to see. You can see there are some crappie out over here. But we should be coming up here on a lot of them. So here's, you can see a bunch of little shadows up in there. Those are actually relatively shallow. They're shallowed up quite a bit. Now here comes a good deep school right here. So you can see them on my down imaging, how thick that is. You can see them on the side imaging. They're the ones we just drove over. There's some more out here to the side. You can see their shadows. So you can see they're suspended higher in the water column. There's some more over here. More coming up a little bit. But uh, you know, that's, that's really what we're looking for right there when we find just a school. There's some more coming up 
off to our side. So I'm gonna set up here and uh, we'll fish on them just a little bit, see if they're biting today. And if not, we'll go down into the, just the middle of this creek and we'll go find some more schools like that and we'll catch them. There's one. Got a little school I wanted to eat finally. First one or two didn't really want to cooperate. But they weren't hungry, I guess, but these seem to bite right away. We'll see if we catch more, if it's just a couple, and then we gotta move a little bit. Nice white crappie here. Healthy one. And maybe if I change colors, it would help too a little bit, but it's working good enough since I ain't keeping them just messing around. So here's what a little bit better school looks like on your forward facing sonar, kind of what you're looking for. Just nice little pods like this that are grouped together pretty tight. We'll uh, cast our jig. I usually try and go right above them or like at the top, uh, like third of them. That usually gets them to bite. So we'll see if we can get a couple of these to uh, cooperate with us. There's another one. So they're actually tapping it pretty decent. Lately, uh, it was so hard to detect it was like it'd be so patient and really let them take it today they're actually you can feel them tap it and just kind of reel into them softly and get them hooked up but this is two in a row here so another nice white crappie might be a school of white crappie out here so I'll let him go see you later fella plenty of crappie to go around here at uh those arcs and I will say too is wherever you are on the lake um, you don't have to go far you don't have to try and figure out where I'm at and come to this exact spot you don't have to figure out or look at my my waypoints and stuff or GPS and go oh that's he's on the honey hole because if you drive you know five miles to get to where I'm at or ten miles where I'm at in my eyes you drove past five or ten miles of crappie because you can pretty much pick a creek uh, and somewhere in there it's going to look very similar to this and they're going to be biting somewhere in there so it's usually not real hard to find the bigger schools the bigger areas of these fish sometimes you just got to look around a little bit uh to, to find the, the bigger schools but i promise you that they are nearby well, here is a lot of them these guys are close to the bank Let's see if they're willing to eat That's a big old school there. That is fun. All right, now we are just in the middle of a cove, a creek. Nothing special. Pick any one on uh, on the lake here, pretty much something that's a, a long cove that's got a, a creek in it. And we are just going to drive right up the middle, basically here. Maybe zigzag a little bit and start looking for some schools of crappie. So here's some right there showing up. Basically, all I do is uh, I idle through here until I find something that I like or I start seeing a lot of crappie. And then I can either drop waypoints on the schools and go back to them, or usually you get an area that just has so many fish. It doesn't matter. You just drop the patrol motor and you start kind of panning around and go find them pretty easy. A little zigzag on through here. And I'm just zigzagging because that allows me to basically cover more water. Like here's some suspended ones out here in the middle. And there's some shad coming up, so that's good. So I would venture to say that this is going to be probably pretty healthy with some crappie back here at some point. I don't find it. Real good school. There's some more shad. Looks like some crappie scattered around them. There's definitely some crappie right there. So I can see them all. This is perfect textbook. You can see the shad right there. The crappie are all above them. You can see all the crappie on site imaging and stuff. They're just loaded around here. So what I'm going to do is cut the motor. You can see as we're just floating on through here, it's just nothing but crappie, just everywhere. So I'll get, uh, you know, if you want, you could click on this, drop away point, or click on this, drop away point. If you don't have your 
forward facing sonar, you can go back and cast to them. But again, uh, over this open water like this, it's best to have forward facing sonar to be efficient. So we'll go to the front and we will uh, drop her down and we'll go chase some of these open water crappie and we'll catch a couple. I mean, look, there's more schools coming through. So they are thick. There he is. I have a little bitty school right there. Some of the bigger schools that I haven't wanted to eat really as well. Change color to this pro purple. Seems to be doing a little bit better, getting me a few more bites. So problem, like I said, see this hook gap right here? There's not a lot there. This needs to be a bigger hook or a different shape uh, to get a lot more gap because I definitely am losing some fish because of that. That's how I'm looking for crappie on my side imaging and stuff and then going to catch them. Um, like I said, you don't have to have forward facing sonar to do this. Um, but if you're going to do this open water stuff to be efficient, you almost need to have it. If you just want to idle past docks and stuff in the same creeks, or if you find some on like the channel swing bank I was on earlier, or they're closer to the shore, just something um, that you can physically like relate them to because if you get out here in this open water and they move as much as they do it can be really difficult to, to track them down and stay on them but as far as your side imaging goes whether you've got Lorance, Hummingbird, Garmin, whatever you use um, adjust your frequency, adjust your, your imaging. I know like uh, a lot of them have the mega imaging now which is the you're higher than the 800 kilohertz you're in the, the megahertz range so that has good imaging, but you have to remember that also has less power. So if you're having trouble getting that stuff to, to pop, to see that a lot better in the, the water column and stuff on your side imaging, bump that down to that 455 if you've got that setting or that capability, because that is the tried and true looking for uh, fish suspended and stuff in the water column, especially if you're looking at a longer distance like I like to do. So that's how I go about it. Hopefully this helped you. If you have more questions on side imaging itself, I have a video that I can uh, I can actually pin here, I think, but uh, it goes all over side imaging, how it works. I dive into every little depth of it and can really help you understand what you're seeing on your screen and use that to your, your advantage. Because I think side imaging is still one of those things that's very it's kind of gone to the back burner because of forward facing sonar, but uh, it is still an extremely useful tool on your boat and you can just break down very large areas very quickly and figure out if you're in the area where you need to be. So good luck out there. I hope you can put this to work. Uh, this is a phenomenal thing during the winter time, especially if these fish get schooled up uh, in these creek channels, they get out over this open water. Now, as we move into spring, as water temperature gets warmer, right now the water temp's 43, I'd say as that water starts to creep towards 50 and you get in that range a lot of these fish are gonna um, move out of the creek channel not necessarily out of it I guess they're gonna move further back usually um, like I'm about halfway three quarters away back even so they might go more towards the back or they're gonna start to pull up a little bit closer to flatter banks and stuff uh, just kind of preparing to spawn so you, that's when you start looking for your little bit smaller rock or a little bit flatter banks and uh, start looking for your brush piles. And, and sometimes those fish too, they won't even be a brush pile there. They'll just suspend off of that bank a little bit because we're still gonna get the, the temperature swings. You're gonna get the cool nights. You're gonna have some wild weather through spring. So they wanna basically have the access to deep water close by so that they can slide out to the deeper water and then they can slide up uh, shallower to spawn or to, to feed and stuff as we get into spring. So. That's what I like to look for. That's kind of the future or what you're going to be looking ahead here uh, at Lake The Ozarks to catch some crappie. And uh, like I said, I've been using the, uh, the Kitech Easy Shiner has been good or the little Bobby Garland, uh, little baby shad straight tails are good. Uh, but as the water temperature warms up, your kick and tail stuff is going to continue to work and you're going to get into your, uh, your twister tail grubs that will work really well and just be able to, to have more movement with that bait versus right now I'm just slow rolling that thing right through those fish basically as slow as I can and uh, they're, they're coming up and grabbing. So that is just a little bit of the conditions I guess to help you figure out where you need to be and like I also said wherever you put in wherever you're fishing at or you take off or your houses whatever you do not have to go far to find crappie so find your your 
first major creek right next to you or, or something that's got a, a defined creek channel in it and uh, and take off from there. Even if it doesn't have a defined creek channel in it, go scan in there real quick and see. You'd be surprised, you know, if there's shad in there, there's gonna be some crap. So look around for that and uh, that should help you out. So good luck to you on the water. Hope you can put this to use and, and get you some nice crappie limits for you and your buddies. See you on the next one.